this meeting is being recorded. I got to hit okay. Okay. And I'll sing. I'll do yeah, it. Yeah, sing. Go for it. Do it, Mark Dawson. Heard it from a friend who. Heard it from a friend who. Heard it from Sandy. You've been messing around. Hi, Sandy. How are you today? Hi, Mark. I'm wonderful. That was beautiful. <laughs> Just had a guitar in my hand. And I saw the button said live, and I went, that was, and you had your tuna thing behind your head. <laughs> and I thought, this Ario way. tuna songs and all that good stuff. You know, that's that's like the Ario Speedwagon song I do. You just snatched it right out of my hands. I could play it. Well, I, I'm a big, you know, I'm a kind of a closet Ario fan. Oh, um, are you? Oh, I, I, I even know songs like Golden Country and Keep oh. Pushing. Remember those? That's that's before they were huge. Remember yeah. Keep Pushing? Of course. Oh, your guitar is going in and out. My guitar is? Oh. Yeah. Is your noise suppression on? <laughs> it's just an acoustic guitar with no chords attached. What? No, I meant on Zoom. <laughs> oh. See the thing in the top left corner? It says original sound for musicians. I don't see that anywhere. What? There's no musicians here. What? <laughs> You're right there. <laughs> I see uh, on my screen, I see Sandy Netburn on the lower left. I see a record with a red dot on the upper left. And I see a tiny little green dot with no words on my upper right. And on the bottom, I see me, and that's scary down there on the right. What? No, your setup is weird. What? That is weird. Well, I'll just have to cancel. Then, bye, guys. We'll see you. Take no, care. No, 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 <laughs> leave. <laughs> well, we'll live with your fading guitar. Go ahead. I'll stop playing guitar. No, don't do that. I'll just listen to your questions, and then I'll answer with music. How's that? Or you could just play the guitar the whole time. You know, no, no one's objecting to that. I'm not that good. I, you know what? I, I'm a, obviously a bass player. Hey, that's beautiful. All this guitars. Brian. Are... What do you call it? This is Brian. Oh, it's Brian. Well, this is Martin's. Martin, meet Brian. It's nice to see you, Martin and Brian. Oh, uh, there, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. We're just, we're just, we're fast friends is what we are. Fast I think you're right. Yeah. It's all started with bananas. Is that a G? What were you playing there? It was a G because I was going to go <laughs> again. It's happening. Uh-oh. The creation is happening, Mark. All right. I'm ready. To I Mark, you froze. Oh, there you are. Glad you're there. Is something happened on, yeah. I don't know what it was. But. Here's my magical G chord. <laughs> Here's the octave of that. Whoa. How? You take, you take a D, a standard D, and move it up to the seventh fret. The seventh fret. Hey, look at that. And if you add your little finger, it'll make it. That adds the B in there. The full. So you can play G, A, going up there, F at the fifth fret. It opens a new. So when you're playing, like you just, you know, you're playing around, you're at a C. And then you want to go to F. You don't have to just go here. You can go here. Why not? Going up to F. I, 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 I learned that many uh i do a lot of cheating chords where they're i'm not, not cheating they come in really handy actually chords like like that d chord uh years ago wow 25 or 30 i was watching a james taylor video and james taylor has a unique picking and cording style and i noticed that and i he was playing you've got a friend and i i, I know that song you know all that but then he went up to like i knew it was a g and he started playing this and i went and it's cool because it puts the g on the bottom I'm yeah sorry, so anyway i was watching what he did it's like oh well that makes sense because 
It's it's like an F chord. If you took an F and you moved it up to the fifth fret, it's an A, right? If you went and you, that's an A, just like a bar chord. You play bars. I've seen you. <laughs> Same idea. Got that F down there. That's your first bar. Fifth fret makes it an A. Right. Your, D, your standard D. Take that. All of a sudden, my fingers wouldn't. <laughs> changes with the so you can play it with, especially when you use a capo it really comes in handy up there yep mine's here somewhere i don't know where i got about nine like, of them like he's a shark he's oh i like the shark that's cool <laughs> i like that a lot isn't it weird <laughs> I, you know i'm gonna have to get them my wife buys me a bunch here's one here just like capos let, yeah, I've got all kinds. Of, this is just a standard, oh, but she always gets like a blue one. I've got, and I'm going to tell her she's got to find me a shark one now because that's, that's it way cool? cooler than this. No, it's yours hey. is cool. It's pretty. I got, I was between a shark and a crocodile, but I kind of figured that the shark was cooler. I think so. When it comes to music, crocodiles are cool. I love alligators and crocodiles, but so does Elton shark. John. Crocodile. <laughs> That was really bad. You just said crocodile rock, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'll stop now. I was enjoying that one. You haven't asked me any questions. Oh. <laughs> I'm just busy playing music, being weird. We're busy, we're busy talking about music. It's hard. It's really hard to focus. Don't you think so? Don't you think focusing is, like, hard? You know, um, yes. But when I'm on stage, I'm laser focused. I can have conversations. I could, um, It's the weirdest thing. If I'm doing like for like just say I'm playing a song and somebody walks over here and my wife or whatever and says something, I have to stop and go, I'm sorry, what'd you say? I can't lock in. But when I'm on stage, I could have two conversations, talk to the audience, play all the notes, think about what I'm gonna have for dinner. It I don't know what it is. It never affects me on stage. I can talk and play and but anywhere else. I, I turn into an imbecile. <laughs> well, that's normal anyway, I guess. Oh, my God. That's who you, you ask, I guess. Oh. Anyway, just... <laughs> and then I've, I've had other people where, I don't know uh, about you, but I've, I've been in groups with other people. You can't even say, like, what the next song is. They'll just go, like, don't look at me. Like, you know, because they can't concentrate on... That's weird to me. Music should just flow. It shouldn't be something you need to think about. It's, if, if it doesn't feel right, then you might be doing something wrong. You know, I don't know that for sure, but maybe, maybe you would. <laughs> no, I think I think you're right about that. I mean, I'm very inexperienced, but in the few times I've gotten to play with real life people and not just like the chairs in my basement, um, it's like, you know, the muscle memory is, it's just there in your fingers and in your head and in your throat i guess it's just you know it's just music it is and i'm going to tell you something sandy i i have uh in the last uh maybe a couple of months i've seen some of the you know your music videos what you do and i got to tell you something and, and this you take it however you like one of my big pet peeves with uh -oh. young people and music is that they pick up an instrument and they go yeah yeah whatever and they they learn exactly and only what they want to learn, what they want to learn. And and I see you and I, I see you with your friends and on your own. And I realize you are just eating up the knowledge. You're you take a song that you love and you you just go full all in on it. And I love the passion. You 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 were playing something like it was Led Zeppelin or something. I don't remember what song it was. Maybe it was it. Uh, you need so. Yeah. 
maybe it was Black Dog. I, anyway, I saw you. I it was some kind of Zeppelin. And you well, were I love just, Zeppelin. So I mean, you know, that's very likely. <laughs> you were just killing it, and I and I I stood there and I just smiled because you just go all in. And uh, there's so many people that are timid. If you're not gonna, if you're if you want to play music, one time or another, you got to get out and do it in front of people. Don't be shy. If, and it's best to go out and and don't your friends are going to say, oh, you're the greatest ever. Those aren't good friends. You want friends to tell you the truth. And if it was bad, then we say, look, you need to work on this. And uh, I see you, you have some friends that seem to uh, enjoy what you do and uh, of the same, they're cut from the same cloth, shall we say. And that's good because they're, I noticed they're, hey, do this one, play that one, try that. So keep that up. That's all. Just uh it, it looks it looks good to me. I like it. Thank too many, you. too many young ones who, rock band and guitar hero that killed people wanting to learn guitar. That killed it. I don't so, care. Though. Like why? Why would you do that? I, because you could. It's easy to follow dots. You don't need to actually get blisters on your fingers. I mean, you. How many? How long did the blisters last when you first started learning? They how long hurt. did they last? No, how long did they last? You know, when you got blisters on your fingers and it was like, oh. but you kept playing through them, oh. right? Yeah, that's true. And eventually they just got okay. It doesn't feel so. A lot of people quit because of the blisters. Yeah. But it's you have so to. It's worth it. It's worth every I, bit. I, I agree. Well, that was beautiful. F major seven to G major seven. Thank you. Oh, that's cool. You it up? That's cool. Yeah, and you leave the E on top. Okay. Oh, neat. Well, your F major seven is there. And then right. just go up. So your first you go to A minor. Good. A minor resolves it. Ooh. <laughs> wow, that was cool. <laughs> Thank you. And old school chord progressions. That's all I really know is old school. What makes it old school? You know, uh, that, that F, G, A minor, uh, if you think of 70s rock, I had a lot of that. Like Fleetwood Mac songs. Um, yeah, I mean, that's to me, that's what rock music should be right there. Um, although there's a few artists that I, these days, that uh, I'm enjoying very much. They keep that that uh, some of that 70s, that old school 60s and 70s rock behind their new music. Cause it, but there's a lot who don't. There's, and I'll be honest, there's a lot of new music I simply don't understand. I, I hear it and I go, how do those chords work together? <laughs> Discords in my ear, but if, if people like it, okay. I'm not gonna, it's fine. <laughs> I'll stay yeah. with the people's <laughs> stones, the who, I'll stay with that stuff. Yeah. Oh, good choices, too. I love all the classes. I mean, so good. There, there, there's only a few of, of those classes that I was not fans of. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't like that when I say, not really a fan of the Beach Boys. And they go, what? Uh, not really. Um, I think Brian Wilson was a genius, and I think the rest of the band was at best. They just, Mike Love, Hack. <laughs> Al Jardine, hack. <laughs> now, Al, Al Jardine's son is freaking amazing. What a vocalist that guy is. He sings all of Brian Wilson's parts when they do their fake Beach Boy band, when they go out without Brian. Well, it's, I mean, it's not, Brian was the voice. That was, without that high voice, Beach Boys were nothing different. Brian really made the difference. And, um, and they don't have it when Brian's there, but Matthew, uh, Matthew Gardine or Jardine, however they pronounce their name. Sorry, you're going to cut that out, aren't you? If you want me to, whatever you want. <laughs> no, nah, this is just me. I'm not making fun of anyone. It's just, it's opinion. Everybody has one. Yeah, that's always good, right? Opinions. You didn't even ask. I just gave it to you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to listen. <laughs> well, tell me. So tell me, who who do you find, or who did you find when you were first getting into learning music to be your greatest musical influences? 
Uh, there were uh, two in particular that were huge. Uh, well, initially Paul McCartney, because when I saw the Beatles, uh, when I saw them on Ed Sullivan that first time, I didn't really know what they were doing exactly. I mean, they were had some instruments. I didn't know how you achieve that. But whatever they were doing, I decided that's what I want to do. That on that stage, and I, you know, however it takes to get there, I'll figure it out. So, so for a couple of years, I just I I didn't realize you had to actually learn to play a guitar. So I didn't learn that yet. Um, I but I looked cool holding one, or so I thought. And then a few years later, so that was sixty uh, four, sixty three actually early. Uh, no, 64 when they were on TV. A couple oh. of years later, Creedence Clearwater came around. And I realized I could figure out what chords he was playing. Where I couldn't do that with Beatles songs, necessarily. A lot of major seven, you know, minor things. Beatles are always doing that. Well, John Fogart is just playing. That's it. It's D, A, and G. Occasionally he throws in a seven chord. I go, man, that's my favorite chord. So I I remember hearing their second album, and it was Born on the Bayou. Born on the Bayou. Born on the Bayou. All right. And that was it. was one chord for the whole song. I went, I could do that song. So I had my... Then you had to go. I could even play the lead. So I was excited. That was what really got me pumped up. Creed and Clearwater Revival, because I could play all of their songs. And that's what started me on guitar. Knowing, learning those songs. I really cannot blame you. I, God, I love them. Aren't they brilliant? You want to know a little fact? Let's and this hear makes me almost angry. They never had a number one song. They what? had four number twos. Four number what twos. Were, what were they? Bad Moon Rising, Proud Mary, Do Do Do, Looking Out My Back Door. And I believe the other was Down on the Corner. Remember that one? I, I don't know. I, oh, I love them. <laughs> Uh, so have, have you ever seen the rain? Never made it up? Like, seriously? <laughs> Is that like, oh, what? Yeah. yeah, I don't think that was quite as big. That was a hit, of course. Uh, that's like, when I think of them, that's what I think of. Have you ever seen? And his voice, John's voice. It's so still as It's still today as strong as it was then. And people don't realize how high his voice is because it's so gruff, you know, it's got that rough, so it doesn't sound like it's a high-pitched voice. Let me tell you, he gets up there, he's singing Bs, and for men, that's that's a high, I used to, when I was younger, I could hit that easy, but I cannot hit that note anymore. But I, can, I never even realized that. Yeah, that's his, think about, uh, what was the, well, every, have you ever seen The Rain? When he goes, I want to know. Have you ever? It's yeah, that's pretty high. It's really up there. You know, it's something like that. Yeah, it's just, it's between A and B. He's John Fogerty's the man. It's crazy. You know? Do you know? <laughs> uh, you know the song? Um. Oh shoot, that's really bad. Why can't I think of the name? It's not a Creedence Clearwater Revival song. Um. Hold on, I'll think of it. Uh, I can't think of the. Uh, oh. oh shoot! I'm a few bars. Oh, uh, it's the one where he says shoes like shoes. Um, uh, um. Susie Q. Ah, uh, Susie Q. That's not the one. No, it's not it. But that's a great song. Oh my god. Let's, let's talk about that one instead. Um, center field. I used to think. Oh. I. I used to think of Wow, so I play that. Oh, the chords are oh, it's so good. <laughs> I know the words. Well, I hope the phone can help you the drum. The sun came out today. We're born again as a new grass on the field. Found a bird and headed for home. Brown-eyed, handsome man, anyone can understand the way I feel. Well, put me in, coach. I'm ready to 
played that before but, but i love john fogarty how could you not though i used to think when he put me in coach in that song that he was like i'm so willing to play this game i'll sit and coach to get him which is like the dumbest i don't know why i even just told you that but like that's exact up until like two months ago that's what i thought that song was about <laughs> <laughs> john fogarty's a big uh, big baseball fan uh oakland uh, athletics is his is his team I've actually seen him take batting practice with the Oakland A's. Seriously? That's so cool. After that song was uh, was popular. Really? When? What year was that? I feel like 81? it's- 81? Really, is it really mm -hmm. late? I don't know why I thought it was like mid seventies. He, he had taken a, uh, he had taken a 10 year hi hiatus uh, because of his record company woes and uh, didn't record for 10 years and then he came back in fact on that very same album uh he had a song called vance can't dance but he'll steal your money and it was about uh a guy named saul zanstein and that was the guy who managed john fogarty for many years and stole millions and millions of dollars from millions uh john wasn't broke but didn't have much at all after writing a song like proud mary you should have more money than anybody on the planet but he did not <laughs> So he wrote this song called Zance Can't Dance, but it's Steal Your Money. And Zance Saul Zalstein tried to sue John Fogarty for writing that song. And John Fogarty said the very man realized it was about him, you know, and, and of course the suit never happened. What he did end up doing was they ended up striking a deal where John got his publishing rights back. But it's it stemmed from that. So John agreed to change that song. All he did was change it to uh, another word instead of Vance, it was like can'ts can't, i don't know what the word was they, they the later album versions had a different song different title that was the only agreement and in doing so john got his rights back to to all of his fantasy recordings that was the label fantasy and uh then john started after that started playing the creed songs live he wasn't playing them live at all and i saw him live a couple of times not playing any credence it's kind of odd. Yeah, I bet. We all know and love those songs, of course. That's, uh, about this. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. But I'm glad he's still around, still doing it. And uh, I was, yeah, big John Fogarty fan. Big, big, big. Oh, that's so awesome. I mean, you, you apparently, I mean, you play it so well. It's so cool. Well, thanks. I don't, yeah, I, 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 I just, there's songs. And getting back to the original thing, the thought on that was Creedence songs, to me, they're like, they're American soul in that. And it's not, I mean, like soul music. America is in those songs. Uh, and, and mostly, if anything, a swamp infested America. I mean, he sings about being down south. And John, he's from San Fernando Valley in, in California. But they have that very swamp Americana south sound. And it just, I just think that's part of, it's in us, you know, and that's why I think we're attracted to uh, CCR so much. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. Wow. You're like totally in this. Like, you, you are the music, Mark. <laughs> like Barry Manilow. What's that song? <laughs> um, Barry. There's a great, great, what a great musician. Just a great songwriter, been around forever. Uh, a good friend of mine is Ron Dante, and Ron produced nine albums for, uh, you know Ron? Yeah, I love him. He's, he's just, as, as talented as we know him is, he's that nice of a person. He's a, a genuine good soul, worries about others, and he's just got a heap of talent, man. He's such a good guy. Oh, that's so cool. I didn't even know that you knew each other. Yeah, we've worked together a bunch. Uh, and uh, we, you know, once in a while, we chat on the phone and phone occasionally. We talk about other people. <laughs> but always in, the, in, a, in a kind way. Always. You're lifting an eyebrow as if I wouldn't be kind to someone. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Would you? 
I, Although, I mean, I should I certainly hope that I certainly strive to always be and hope that I am. I have, say that, uh, I have a saying I've said for many, many years. If you when you come right down to it, the only thing we have on this earth is each other. So we should be good to one another because of that. We are the we will be the last thing that we have for one another. Nothing else. Just you and me. Let's start being nice now. That's so now or else. <laughs> oh, I love that, though. That's so sweet. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> it's just what I, I I like that idea. I just think it's a good, you know, be good to each other. That's the bottom line. But we don't have much else or we might not have much else, if anything. Am I wrong, Anna Lynn, or am I wrong? I didn't know if she was listening. You, I'm not you, wrong? No, no, you are not. I'm definitely listening. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm just looking at you, Anna Lynn. I'm thinking, is she getting this or does she just want me to shut up? Because I will. I will. Eventually. No, I don't want you to shut up. No. <laughs> All right. All right. You know what and else? It's just we have? three of us. We, we have each other and we have bananas without seeds. And, that, you know, good thing we do, because uh, if it weren't for those genetically modified bananas, we would be eating seeds when we bite down on that glorious potassium filled piece of fruit. Uh, I could be the prince of potassium if I ate enough bananas. <laughs> Seedless, mind you. Yeah, You know, we could be eating seeds. Someone had the, the wherewithal to say, let's get rid of these seeds. And then they genetically modified them. Look it up. It's so weird that you know all this. Well, it, so um, I'm. What else other than bananas? What fruit do you like more? Yeah, I'm not much of a fruit guy. Um, I once in a while though. Yeah, I know, I know. I, it's it's crazy, and and here's the crazy part. Every and if you've been in backstage at any concert, there's always a, a plethora of fruit trays and vegetable trays, always. And it's like, oh, look at all that beautiful fruit, which I eat none of. I just, I don't know why. But sometimes, like last night, I went to Sprouts yesterday. I had to buy some stuff. And they had these, they were plastic bins full of fruit. And they were like super cheap. And they looked really good. I went, I'm buying that. I ate the whole thing last night. Ooh. So once in a while, I do eat fruit, see? It was it was melon and cantaloupe and grapes and pineapple, a little bit of pi papaya in there. I don't know what that is. What's a papaya? Is that bad? Is it bad that I don't know what that is? <laughs> papaya. Oh, maybe it's just a Florida thing. Um, it's kind of an orangish, pinkish fruit. If you uh, do, you know what a mango is? Do you yes, know what mango. Yes, I do. Okay, sort of mango like, but add. If you took a mango and added a cantaloupe into it, the papaya would kind of taste and have that consistency. If you took mango and and cantaloupe together, yeah, not melon, not uh, it would have to be cantaloupe. Those two, that's it. Have you put a lot of thought into that previous this conversation, or is this just like a spur of the moment? Like, yeah, that's right. Never Ever since you asked me, that's how much thought I put. <laughs> that's that was like really quick though. Like that's very analytical. You're very analytical. Well, I thought of the two things, <clears throat> and I thought, well, this, these flavors, yes. <clears throat> that's kind of how I cook. I like to cook a lot, and when I do, I don't generally. I plan an idea, like I'll do something with, and I'm, I don't eat meat or so. I'm almost vegan, but definitely vegetarian. I'll, I'll sort of throw the doors of the refrigerator open and go that, 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 and that. Let's see what I come. And that's how I cook. I don't really plan. I just buy stuff and then see what happens. Wait. So, okay. All right. I really have no, <laughs> what was that face? Um, I have no knowledge in this area. How, if you don't really eat fruit and, and vegetable trays and all that, like, I love veggie. Oh, I love vegetables. Oh, ve okay, all right. You said there were fruits and vegetables backstage that you ate none of. So I mean, you know. Oh, I meant oh, I meant none of the fruits. But I meant sorry. <laughs> I do like the veggie still. 
Yeah. And I make, yeah. I like a lot of vegetable based things at home too. You know what I really love and have a slight obsession with? The snap peas. Those are great. I love them. They are good. Uh, it's been a while since I've had some of those. Now I have to go buy some. As you just said that. It's a thing, right? It's like you just think that. It's like, you know what? I'd like to eat that right now. <laughs> just, just, just it. What do you think of it? Snap peas. I've seen them that they come flavored now. Have you seen this? What? Now, are you talking about the snap peas that you buy fresh in produce? Yeah. Are you talking about? Okay. Okay. Never mind then. There, there are these processed snap peas that you can buy that have like pepper and sea salt. And they're crunchy. Yeah, I don't think we want those. Okay. <laughs> what? Doesn't that like eliminate the whole, like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, I just saw them and I was just wanted to be sure which one you enjoy. The same one I enjoy. Okay. I cannot believe that. That is, that's an atrocity. Yeah, it probably is. You shouldn't do that to vegetables. No. You know, I was talking to this girl in my school and she said that she, God, what was the flavor of it? She said they were flavored apples. Um, and like, have you heard of this? Only recently I, but I, and I saw this guy cut the apple and open up. It was red inside. And they said it was a cherry something. And I thought, that's wrong. That's just wrong. They're trying to trick me. You know, you Why get would... old and they think they can get over on you. Well, that's horrible. Um, and why would you flavor another fruit? Like, what sense is it just by what it is you're looking to eat? <laughs> well, I, I did hear there was an apple passion fruit that was kind of good. What's a passion fruit? I don't, I don't really know what passion fruit tastes like. I don't know if I've had it. So, and the apples are fine if you want one. Yeah, why don't you just have an apple or just have a cherry? Or, <laughs> like, why? Well, how about this? You go buy a jar of maraschino cherries, you pour them directly onto your apple and eat it. You're best of both worlds right there. And you control the amounts. That's true. You're in control. You're welcome. You're well, welcome. <laughs> you know what? When I realized um, we were going to be doing this. Uh I, was just, I was just moving closer. That's all. Nothing more. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's precisely my point. When I when I realized we'd be doing this interview, I did not think we'd be talking about fruit flavored fruits. You know, <laughs> it's just like it's just what happens. The best time spent together is the one you don't plan for. That always works out the best. Though, if you plan, then you have an expectation level, and you go, "Yeah, this will be great. We're gonna do these things." And then you go, "Oh, I didn't get to that stuff. Oh, my expectations. We have no expectations. No expectations." <laughs> You might, but I dashed mine a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> dashed? I dashed my expectations. It sounds British. What, what, what does that mean? <laughs> oh, you can dash. Uh, dash, you can move it away. Da yeah, that's just another. Oh, I want to I wanna start saying that, I think. <laughs> I'm going to let you in on a little thing. I don't tell people this, but I'll tell you because you're smart. Well, you are. I think you come off smart. I don't know your okay. age, but I know you're... You're a what you could. How many? 16. No! Well, then it's the perfect time for you. You're, you're, I see. That's, that's cool. I carried around when I first began to uh, do any kind of touring and playing, about, I was about 18 then. I carried an encyclopedia, um, a dictionary, and a thesaurus with me. And uh, I would read the thesaurus uh, to, you know, just to, see what words were going on, how I could use them in uh, conversations. But the dictionary was with me whenever I would hear someone say, whether it was on TV or wherever I was, if someone would say a word that I didn't understand or didn't know, I would immediately look it up and highlight it. So I didn't want to be ever left behind. And this was, now you could just do it on your phone, but I carried these two little books around with me everywhere. And it was just a regular thing I did for a, a bunch of years till I thought I was smart enough to hang with them, with everybody. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that was my thing. It, it made me it made me feel like I was a little smarter anyway. Feel like. You know? That's, well, that's like that's so awesome. I well, 
great at thesaurus in the fourth grade, because I finished, I, I guess I used to like reading, and we had, like, assigned bins to our tables, um, in, in our classroom, and I finished all five of them in there, and I was bored, so I just started reading a thesaurus, so I would start using, like, really gigantic words really out of place, but it was fun. Yeah, it, it makes you think about, li about literacy. What if I use this word instead of that one? I actually began to think that way. Um, instead of just saying, yeah, right, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, that's cool. I mean, I still say that anyway. But when describing something, I, I, I like to use uh, more descriptive terms when I can. Uh, instead of just going, yeah, it was yellow and the, the plastic was on the bottom and it was kind of, you know, it was smooth. And uh, yeah, okay. Much like your outfit, Annalyn, yellow and smooth, very pretty. <laughs> Very pretty. You think I'm pretty? <gasps> of course you're pretty. Everyone is beautiful on the inside, but you also have outer beauty. <laughs> you really? Oh my, he thinks I'm pretty. Can you even believe that? Oh my goodness, Mark Dawson just called me pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad that we'll be friends for a very, very long time. It's exciting to know you. And Sandy as, as well. I, I mean, in addition, uh, it, it, yes. I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> so um, You guys are the, are the cutest sisters I've ever met, I think, in my life. The two cutest sisters. sisters. Okay. <laughs> sure you are. I know. Yeah? Yeah. What and about I am your long lost stepbrother, father, grandfather. One of those things. <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny. You know, I keep befriending people that are um, between the ages of 40 and, like, 70, and they don't know what to consider me. A, a lot of them go for niece, but, you know, it's not like, you know. And I have a couple of nieces that are about your age. I have a couple, well, they're grand, great nieces now, I think. Is that what, you, second niece you when you move? Them? I don't know. So I've got, a, I've got nieces and nephews who are, the youngest one is 19 now. So, but then I've got a next generation. I think we call them it's still my niece, but I think it's my great niece now because I didn't even know that she's, a, she's a daughter of a niece. So she's my great niece, right? Is that, I've never heard that before. Is that bad? Does that make you like really out of touch? <laughs> no, I, I'm not even sure if it's right. Uh, it should Here, be let's though. The right? internet. Let's find out. Don't you want to know? Let's see. Okay, but I, I'm gonna. I'm, you, I'll do my Siri thing. Let's see. Uh, okay. I can ask the Let's see. Um, first, you got to undo your phone. Let's see. Uh, hey Siri, what do you call the daughter of your niece? Sorry, I can only call one person at a time. <laughs> did, did you hear that? <laughs> I can only. Call that's so funny. <laughs> Let's try it another way. <sighs> Siri, what is the proper name of the daughter of your niece? It's Daniela Dawson. <laughs> That's my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I, he knows my daughter. That's Hi, Daniela Dawson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's> my daughter. <laughs> You keep your my daughter's name out of your mouth. Oh, that was so Will Smith. <laughs> okay, let's let's yeah. do some research here. I'll type. Let's see what happens. Uh oh, open someone's text. Uh, oh, what I you know how Messenger it brings up those little bubbles of the people you're texting. I went to go search this up and I open someone's text and they're gonna think I'm ghosting them. But well, that's okay because they can deal with it. I'm talking to Mark Dawson. <sighs> <laughs> um, what is- I don't have little bubbles on my text, so I'm learning something right now. Seriously? That's cool! I wish I could get rid of them. Grandniece or great niece? What would it be? It's either grandniece or great niece. I said both of those things, I think. <laughs> Congratulations. Did you hear that, Harper? You're my great grand. She's two. I <laughs> but I have a couple that are other ages, too. You just dismissed them like that? <laughs> Did 
there's a song you would like. Play that. There's no piano, I'm just saying. As soon as you are in the yeah. I am willing to make you break that we are on the brink of all the silver tables. I love this feeling. We should never get to take a drink of G minor. Oh, it's B flat. And if you're tired of the same, B flat, D minor, C. Oh, is it G minor? Oh, I've been playing this long. If you're tired of that same old story, oh, man, I think we can do this at the same time. Oh, yeah, with Zoom, that's the sad thing about Zoom. You can't do that. And um, during the whole pandemic, oh, it was painful. I mean, I, I, I did 438 days in a row. I played live online. That's so cool. Oh my God. It was, it was pretty cool. Um, I have a, I have a group, a, a f um, fan group that's on the internet, on Facebook. It's called making noise with Mark Dawson fans and friends. Oh, Somebody I started, I'll, I'll sign you into it if you're interested. Oh, really I really cool people. And they call themselves the noise makers. And, uh, because I do a radio show called making noise. And, uh, so they're the noise makers and, I forgot the point I was going to make, but uh, you're talking about Zoom and the delay. Oh yeah, oh yes, and then because you, you can't play together on Zoom, so I had musicians I wanted to create with, but we really couldn't. So I ended up. Uh, my wife and I started talking about people who are, who were stuck inside alone. Now oh, it's one thing if you, if you you know if you want to be alone, that's your call. But many people didn't want to be alone and may have been uh, forced to be alone during that time. And uh, and I know some of the noisemakers may have situations where uh, they were less, they, they didn't have their family. <laughs> Sorry, I dropped my Schwell bottle. I my <laughs> the ukulele is fine. It's fine. I love my ukulele. I have many, but I love that one the most. Anyway, we just thought there are people out there that really need interaction so i started doing it every day and i'd play 20 or 30 minutes every day you give them five four five six songs and then we we uh, did a full concert a couple of times so you're like an hour and a half of you know me like my wife and i we had a pajama party one night we all i encouraged everybody to dress in pajamas and they all sent their pictures in and i was able to post that while we uh, I performed in pajamas, and my wife is as well. We had a great time. Oh, that's um, so much fun. Yeah, I, I like to do that kind of thing. So that was the point. During that whole pandemic, and, and the Zoom wouldn't allow us to play together, so I just went and did it solo. I wanted to get my bands, to, you know, together to play for people, uh, but we just couldn't do that. But it was it was great to I, – I learned a lot of songs, too. I learned – every day I tried to learn a new song, at least one. And uh, then I'd play whatever was my memory still had, which which is dwindling <laughs> daily. <laughs> no, don't say that. <laughs> what was your name again? What? 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 Oh, that's right. That's uh, I'm sorry, I, I can't remember. <laughs> that's what happens. You go. Yeah, it's my friend. Uh, uh, her name is uh, the, the, the John Fogarty. Oh, it's really good. Danny, there it is. I see it now. That's what happens. That's what we have the internet for. <laughs> <laughs> Look it up. Well, I mean, you just found out you can find out your daughter's name anytime you want. <laughs> I didn't know that would happen. So that's a little weird. Like you asked Siri what my daughter's name is. No. That's so funny. I wonder if my devices do that. <laughs> let's, uh, let's see if it has. I'm good. Ready? Hey, Siri, what is my wife's name? Unlock your iPhone first. Oof. It's Kathy Bernardi. It knows. <laughs> Hi, Kathy. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, my wife, too. Why did I just go out of focus? Oh, no. <laughs> it's blurry. Is it? Yeah, I think. I'm, I'm there. I'm, I see you. I can perfectly. see you. I can't see. I'm blurry now. That's it. Oh, we're back. 
Yeah, it was a slight bur blur, but it was only slight. I mean, un excuse un poquito. <laughs> I know, I'm well versed in Spanish. Are you really? No. <laughs> I'm the only white guy in Florida who can't speak Spanish at all. Are you supposed to be able to speak Spanish in Florida? Well, there's a lot of Spanish speakers. Is that true? I don't know. I haven't. I don't leave my basement. No. <laughs> I was gonna say New York, but it's really my basement. You live in uh, upstate New York, or are you in Long Island? Long Island. Long Island. At the Westbury Theater in uh, I think really? it's in March or May, oh. I think it is. That's like twenty minutes from here. We play there all the time. Seriously, what? At the oh, Westbury, wait. yeah. Hold on, I'm gonna be there on March 27th to see Sticks. So let's I love things. Do you? When you're with me, I'm smiling. It's me. And my troubles all fade. Is that what the words? You're my lady. I used to love, I, I knew the old Sticks. Uh, I was Ooh. a big Sticks fan. Um, before Tommy Shaw was even in the band. Yeah, I, I love that record. I was, uh, my band uh, back then was a band called Dreamer in Chicago. And uh, we actually shared a rehearsal place with Sticks uh, before they were huge. And uh, great guys, great band, amazing group. I was there the day they auditioned Tommy. Oh my and, God. Uh, they had, um, J.C. Kurluski was the, uh, and he was a great friend of mine. J.C. died. Oh, and, uh, I didn't even know that. Yes, he well, actually they they were they kicked him out of the band, and six months later he had an aneurysm, died from that. Oh. Yes, it was awful. Uh, but bringing to, and J.C. was a great musician and a great person and all that, and lovely family. Uh, but Tommy was insanely talented. <laughs> And when he walked in that day and sat down and pulled out a guitar, we all went. Oh, this <laughs> How guy did his was... hair look? What's that? How did his hair look? That's the most important part. <laughs> you know, his hair was much shorter back then. I just, I don't. Here's what I remember about Tommy. Okay. Now I had seen him play before. He was in a band called MS Funk. And the really? reason they were called, that was their name, MS Funk. The reason he was, the band was called MS Funk, their drummer, who was pretty great, had MS and couldn't walk. So I don't know how he worked the pedals on his kit, but that guy was a great drummer and they were called MS Funk. They were from Mississippi, so MS oh, also, yeah. but the MS was because of his legs. Um, Tommy was the front guy, singer, guitar player. He was always great. He used to come to our we had a rec center that would have bands when I was 15, 16, 14 years old, you know. Um, and we, so MS Funk would play there. So when they, when the guys in Sticks told us they were bringing a new guy in to audition and, and they said his name, I went, you're going to love him. I didn't know they, they were bringing Tommy. And they're like, you, you've seen him? And I remember telling Jay why with Sticks, I said, I said, he's probably going to show you a riff or two because JY was the lead player and he laughed a little bit. And then uh, anyway, they brought him in later and they sat down and they played a few songs. Tommy played them crystal ball because after they did a few songs, they did some Beatles songs and they just wanted to see harmonies. They did here, there and everywhere. Um, for, wait, that's not that one. It's the other one. Uh, he here. He's in. Oh, I can't even think the, to lead a better life. Anyway, they did Beatles. That's scary. <laughs> it, 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 yes, you wouldn't know that. We were just there, you know. And, and then, uh, then uh, Dennis DeYoung said, "Got anything that that you uh, that you write?" And I had heard some of Tommy's song, I, the MS Funk songs. I knew they were good songs. And he said, in his, he had the most thick Southern. He talked so much like that, you couldn't even tell what he was saying half time. That's how Tommy talked. It was weird. Really? He's dropped most of that. But anyway, he said, yeah, I've been working on this new song I got, and I'll play it for you. And he played Crystal Ball, and 
now we weren't standing in front of town. We were on the side because we given them space, but we're standing back going, holy crap, what a what a song. He was in the band 15 minutes later. He oh my God. That was it. They said they they said, we'll see you next week. They sent him back to the rehearsal and they started their tour and that was the rest is history. Their next album had that as the as the uh, lead song, you know, the album title. Yeah, I Tommy, saw such a good guy too. That is so That's cool. cool. <laughs> it it was pretty cool. Um, I got to play with Tommy before and you know things like that. I've, um, it's been a long time since I've seen him, but it's crazy. Oh my god. <laughs> I was a huge Sticks fan too. I love just love Sticks. Uh, How could you not? Know? It's... Yeah, they're Chicago boys too. That's where I was from, you know. Really? My, my local boys do good, you know. The talented people seem to come out of Chicago. That's There's crazy. some. I, you know, I wish I was one of them, but there are many. So, did you on it. In Chicago? Did did I not just hear that? Did you not just say that? I said some. Yeah, some of them are there. I just hope I was one of them. Maybe. Of course. Well, of course. I'm working on. It. I'm working on. It, okay. Easy. <laughs> oh, what was that? D up to E. That's all just. That was fun. <laughs> I do this in my life, uh, my songwriting life. Um, many times I'll just hit a guitar and and, and I'll say, like, oh, what were those two chords? I, I don't think. And then sometimes they sound good together and I'll see if I can make something up from those. And that's how I write, so, not always, but Many times I just hit a note or two, or I'll hear someone say a word, like a, a, a statement. And I go, that's a cool word to say. And maybe see if I can work that in. So wow. I, I, yeah. <laughs> wow. I know nothing about writing songs. So, I mean, that's just wild to me. You will. You will. You're, you're, get, you're getting your mastery of the uh, neck down now. And once you get a little more... Um, little more comfortable you'll see you'll start just throwing melodies out there it's inevitable i hope <laughs> i'd like to it is you'll see if you say so i just saw i just realized you had jones capricorn and aquarius back there yeah. I was like, take the last it's not on that record. I realize that, but it's the monkey. What record anyway. is that on the first one? I do believe so. That was a big, big. Oh, right. It was the first one. Oh. <laughs> Sunday, yeah. It's actually. Sorry. Just G. seven up there oh i realized it was a seven i just thought it was a c yeah the seven i'll tell you what if you want to hear the coolest inversion of a seventh chord that song is done by uh adam can't think of his last name but his band's name is damnation adam something and damnation and they do when they get to that c7 chord i don't know what's on the recording it sounds like sledgehammers are pounding, you know, the street outside. And it's like, that is the coolest sound. It's, it's just big and heavy. And it's just that one chord when they do it. It's just, like, it's moving. I had headphones on. I thought someone was hitting me on the head. Good. That's Adam name. something. Jeffy, or... What's his name? I can't... Anyway, Damnation is the, the band. I'll pick it up. Yeah, Holy Damnation. <laughs> One word, damnation. I love, I love, I don't know, there's something beautiful about that, isn't it? That's, um, that's the chord for, um, what's the closing theme of the monkeys called? <laughs> oh. It's called for Pete's sake. sake. Yeah. Right. Love is understanding. <laughs> the 
see, right? I, I don't know. Is it? Is it? Yeah, see. Is and that and that what you're one? playing, what you're playing right there is a D7. It's is it? one of those, that's a D7, but you're putting the E on the top, which is what, that's the same idea of what I was showing with the D chord, moving it up. So taking the C chord and moving it up makes it a D. I didn't, oh my god. <laughs> That's crazy. That's so cool. Now go up one more step. That's Born on the Bayou by Creedence Clearwater. Oh boy. That's So we went from C to D7 to E7. This makes so much sense. Why am I not like, how did I, how did I miss that? <laughs> when I was in school, uh, I was uh, pretty awful in math and uh, I've gotten a little better, but not much. And I had a teacher and I remember her name, Mrs. Smith, who one day just said to me, I was probably in, maybe I was a freshman then. I might've been eighth grade. A anyway, she said, um, she says, Mark, uh, I understand that you play guitar. Is this true? And I went, oh, yeah, I just, just got a guitar and I'm learning it. And she said, well, you know, mathematics are very, uh, or she says, guitar playing is very mathematical. And I went, what? And she went, you don't think so? I said, well, I, I don't really know. I, I don't know much about the guitar. And she asked me to bring my guitar to school and she would show me. It turns out she was a great guitar player. But she told me about things that, that didn't make a ton of sense, but things like playing that, that chord, you know, and she'd say, do you know how to add a seventh? Or she would say, the seventh is always two steps down. You take two away from the main note of a chord to make a seven. And it was like, you take two away from the main note. So it was like, so a C would be a B flat, and so she would tell me how to count. She taught me augmented chords, which this these are opened up a lot of doors for me. To finish. Turns out every chord I just played is the same chord on this. It's it's inversions. And and so anyway, she taught me about. You're playing these four notes, but up here it's the same four notes. Up here it's the same four again, and finally the same four. So she taught me about adding and subtracting notes from chords, how you can make these augmented and diminished chords. I mean, just simple little minors. You have a minor seven, but you could easily make it a minor nine. And it's way prettier. It's like, that's a minor. Here's the seventh. I mean... Now the ninth, put that on top. So anyway, that, that helped me immensely as a kid learning guitar. It made me think about chords instead of just a C or a G or a D. Simple little thing like this. You play a D, just lift one finger and leave it. And now it's a D6, but it has a whole different, it's a D6. But when, you, when you're writing a song or singing, it'll get a different, the, the timbre of that chord ch will change a melody. Just ever, your top note will be an E instead of an F sharp. Your voice would make it major, but. She taught me all that stuff, just a little thing. And anyway, so it is very mathematical as it turns out. I wish my math teacher was that cool. <laughs> she was totally cool. She didn't give me a lot of lessons. Her point of telling me these things was to make me get a little more involved in math, which I did. It sort of helped. It sort of, you know, it's like, yeah, these can work. I, I get what you, you know, she, she did it in a practical way and it really helped. So it didn't make me smarter, but I, I didn't fail. <laughs> you know what? Not failing math is a great part of learning. <laughs> you know, not having to redo that, not having to retake Algebra 2, 
It was fantastic. Did you do that once? Yeah, that was last year. I had to redo it. I did too in summer school. Me too. (laughs) We want to be at at school. Well, I did. That was the last time. So it wasn't doing that again. No, I I, I finished all my math requirements for high school, so I'm not taking it anymore. (laughs) I'm done. Yeah, well, I'm done too. (laughs) And I've got news for you. I'm 67 years old, and I've never once had to use trigonometry. Just so you uh, know. Why? Like, I don't. Why? Why? <laughs> what is the point? Are they just trying to make me suffer? I, I think I've only used algebra once, maybe, but I don't understand it. We don't need it. I don't. I don't get it. Like, why is that a requirement? The man coming down on us. That's what it is. Just the man. The man. The man. Oh, you don't know about the man? You'll find out soon enough. You have a driver's license? As soon as you get one, the man will start contacting you about things. The man is always out there, Sandy. Always. What's his name? You'll never know. Can I name him? Give him a name. It'll be fun. Give him a name? What? Let's give him a name. I think it'll be fun. I, I love naming things. Sam would, pro- Sam would probably be the best, most mm-hmm. accurate name to give him. Sam. Like Ted Danson and Cheers? No, oh, as an uncle. Oh, I like him better. The man. And be flat. Wrong. Sorry about that. <laughs> what is it? I know that, but what is it? Cheers? The show? Oh, I don't. Where I don't know. I never watched Cheers. Where everybody knows your name. Is that what they sing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Play it for me. I'm I'm ready. Play it for me. I, I, I don't. I just made that up. I don't know. <laughs> I messed this up before. Let's see if I do it right now. Uh, I, I can kind of hear the melody. Uh, something like that. I don't even know. <laughs> so you have a C minor nine in there. You are? Yeah. Did you say so? <laughs> nah. Yeah. This chord. You were playing it. If I was standing up, you could see it better, but I didn't know I was going to be doing a guitar uh, demonstration today. Me neither. (laughs) Man, I think we should um, play a song together here. I don't know how we'll do it, but I think we could go like line by line or something on a song we can both play. What do you think? Okay. We should oh, do. I'm in. You pick the song. I trust you. Yeah. yeah. Um, we should do something REO. We started a couple REO songs. Why not? Um, okay. Hmm, which one should we do, though? You choose. Pushing. <laughs> oh, kidding. Uh, totally kidding. <laughs> not many people know that song, anyway. I know it, but I don't think I can play it. B. I used to be lonely until I learned about living alone. All the things to keep my mind on. That's B minor. Yeah, B minor. I keep pushing on. Remember that one? Who sings on that? Well, there's a trick question. Originally, Terry Luttrell. Who? <laughs> Terry Luttrell. Terry Luttrell was the lead singer of the original lead singer of Ario Speedwagon. I know. And then he he left, and I do not know why he left. Kevin Cronin came in. Of course, they got super big after that. Terry Luttrell went on to uh, be the lead singer of a band called Star Trooper. 
or castle. Star castle? Or trooper. I can't. I, I'm sure I have the album. Starship trooper. <laughs> that Let's was see. The, um, <laughs> Starship trooper or. That's that's the yes song I think. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, he they were very good, very progressive music. Terry Luttrell was their lead singer. Am I wrong? I don't know. I just mistyped it. I don't even. Uh, oh no! What did I do? Uh, um, <laughs> Star Castle. Star Castle. It was okay. Yeah. It wasn't Star Trooper then. And that was uh. So and then they had the uh. So Ario had I think two studio albums they had out at the time. Uh, Greg Philbin on bass, uh, Neil Doughty on keyboards, Gary Richrath on guitar, Alan Gratzer on drums. That was their lineup. Uh, and then Latrell left the band and they hired Kevin Cronin. He was a Southern Illinois guy. And the next thing they recorded was the REO Live, which was just, they were, they toured all the time. They were a band that was one of those, you, you kind of, you sometimes heard their song on the radio, but no big hits, but people would constantly go like, hey, I've heard that band. So wherever they played, people would come, you know, they'd, play a kind of open for bands or do bars or whatever and that's what happened so they were opening for somebody at red rocks in uh in colorado and decided to record that night and the recording itself is okay but it worked because 157 riverside avenue is on there and that got so much fm play when that record came out as well as that one right I, in the storm out oh of course what is what album is that on their first or second with terry luttrell singing oh, but man. the live album oh, yeah. the live <sighs> album is the version that got very popular it's probably right kevin, now kevin singing that uh that had uh golden country uh, had all kinds it didn't have the Tuna Fish album was next after that live record. Yeah, and you know what's on there. So that record was, it was also, Kevin was an instant star from the live record. And it, it, it was a double album, had a lot, all, so basically all of the cool songs were now redone. And FM radio was playing the heck out of ARIO Live. Think about this, that came out in like 73 or four, Classic rock really wasn't born until 71 or two. That's when it started. So they were in the thick of the beginning of classic rock. And they wrote that was that whole arena rock and roll thing. That, that was partly them. Sticks, Warner, Kansas, Queen, oh, Kansas. Journey goes on and on. But all of those bands were, that was a new wave of things that happened. You know, uh, the Eagles got swept up in there. <laughs> Um, you. you're you're my hero you just named my like entire record gap <laughs> same records i have yeah um good album i love um the time for me to fly i think it's probably my favorite what do you think what's your favorite my favorite reo song is probably um i've always Tough guys. I, I oh she doesn't like the tough bo tough boys or tough, tough I, guys. I, I just like that song. I'm not really sure why, but I do think Take It on the Run is really a wonderful song. Um so the good. harmonies in there are are just strong. When he goes Take it on the run, baby. That's the way you want it, baby. Then I don't want you around. Good stuff. Oh, it's so good. Oh my god. High Fidelity is probably my favorite album from them. I think keep on like every song on that album it's it's so hard. It's like every I love um what's the Bruce Hall song? Uh, oh uh, I'm back on the road again. But that wasn't the one I think that's oh my god, so good. Uh what's Bruce lives here in he's he's an Orlando guy, Bruce is. <laughs> yeah. I remember when they hired Bruce, I remember meeting him and I said, Why didn't they hire me? <laughs> we're yeah, about the same age. Hair. Well, we didn't have the uh, 
Bruce's hair was dark and so was mine at that time. <laughs> but now his hair looks, I mean, he's as tall as, as last time I saw him was at SeaWorld. People were going like, looking at both of us, like, who are you guys? You know, <laughs> we kind of stood out. <laughs> hey, I just got a text uh, that I got about a few more minutes. And I've oh, got I'm so to, sorry. I was like, I, <laughs> I, I would do this forever or do it again too. So whatever you want to ask. You haven't even asked me a question yet, did you? <laughs> we just spent an hour and a half talking about like every fruit, um, <laughs> guitar. Well, <laughs> you want to maybe, um, Annalyn should ask you about your words of wisdom and then, you know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I do have some words of wisdom. Wait, hold Actually, on. I'm gonna of... formally ask you. Hold on now. Okay, you formally ask me, and I'll 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 respond formally. Good. I've I've wondered where you had gone. <laughs> on the floor. You have to vacuum. Yeah. Because <laughs> she has a bad back and she needs to stretch out, right? That's that's why she's yeah, on the floor. It's for it's for her own good, right? Good. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta have your mental health. That's a good thing. National. Oh, that's a good song. Na National Health by the King. Oh, I have to learn that. Thank you for that. Adeline, would Adeline, would you like to ask the first and last question? <laughs> yes. Okay. So, Mark, do you have any words of the wisdom for our viewers? I do, actually. Um, so, when I was uh, young, it's a long time ago, uh, my father once said to me, he, uh, it's just sort of a two-part thing. He said, when you're in a situation, especially if it's a work situation, he said, and it just isn't right and you don't feel good about it, don't question yourself. Get out. If it doesn't feel right, it isn't right. He said, but going along with that, when you, have, when you work with people or when you have to coexist with people who are older, they, you may not like them and you may, it, 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 none of that matters. My father's words were, and I've done this my whole life, learn, absorb, be a sponge around people who are not just older, people who are more experienced than yourself. And I've always tried to do that. If I recognize that this person is really knows some things or uh, they're wise. I, I want to be quiet and understand what they're saying. That That's really, and it's helped me a lot. I've actually learned some things that have helped me uh, in my career as well as ways to be prepared and things. And I've learned that from um, other musicians who uh, showed by, led by example, and they were older. And I said, oh, that's how you do it. And uh, I've been very blessed in my musical career. And a lot of it has to do with just watching and listening and learning so that i'd say do that well I'll, I'll do that if you say so i'll do it <laughs> <laughs> now when i say listen you know older more experienced that doesn't mean you have to listen to me i don't mean that at all but someone else you know andy forgy right you know andy who what huh what'd you say thought, you know andy forgy don't you don't from know. all you need is love what you <laughs> know andy am i wrong I think you're wrong. Andy Forgy, lead singer of All You Need Is Love. I don't even know. What? <laughs> I'm sorry, Andy. Andy. Andy's learned from Andy. He knows things. Yeah? You meet Andy. Yeah, I thought you yeah, knew him. I'm sorry. I'll have to meet. <laughs> now I'm going to make sure I introduce you to because Andy's, Andy's a, a, a wise, mature musician guy. Yeah? Cool. I'll take it. <laughs> Well, I'm uh, glad that you joined me here to talk about, I don't even know, <laughs> um, I was going to say your life, but I guess we didn't really get to that. We'll have to do that next time, right? <laughs> we can do that next time. In the meantime, if, if anybody wants to check out anything, uh, the, the Facebook group that I have is, again, please join. Come on and we have fun. It's Making Noise with Mark Dawson, Fans and Friends. And then also on Thursday nights, I do a radio program called Making Noise with Mark Dawson. That is at OurGenerationRadio.com. You can listen right there, or you can listen other ways, but that's the easiest way. OurGenerationRadio.com. Hit the button. Oh, 
<laughs> How you expect more. How should you? <laughs> That's a C chord. You expect more from standard, and you get it. <laughs> You're gonna have to look that up now. That is so weird. It's like I have to know all about it. <laughs> Old standard oil, a standard gas. It was a gas station. Yes. Look her up and. If I'm wrong, I will apologize publicly to you. If I, I didn't think you were. I was like, I have to know. I have to know everything about this. <laughs> uh, sometimes I say things that, with no merit whatsoever, but this time I'm confident. <laughs> Me and Johnny go way back. Oh, that's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, thank you so much. You're, you're the best. I'm so glad to have finally formally met you. My pleasure, and I hope to formally see you and meet you in, and you too, Anna Lynn. I want to meet you as well. Me too. <laughs> that was pretty good. You made the same face. Except it looks way cooler when she does it. I just like a, like a weird old man, so it, I get it, though. It's cool. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, when I do it, not, not when Anna Lynn does it. She looks cool, not me. Not so cool. You look cool all the time. It's just a piece of you. Duh. My shirt is cool. Yeah, cool wow. shirt. that's awesome. <laughs> that's so funny. You labeled it. That's like that's cool. So my cool radio station guy KJ gave it to me. It's uh, oh, that funny? I thought you the were station just... is called Cool Oldies, or I think it's the uh, I forgot where. I think it's in Portland. I don't know. We well, need more out, oldies. Folks. <laughs> <laughs> Groovy. All right. Thank you so much, and I'll Thank see you. Thank you too, Sandy. I, I, anytime you want to hit me up and do it again, let's do that. We will have to. We must. <laughs> I'll listen to only your questions, and I won't speak otherwise. I promise. No, that's what makes it so entertaining. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Glad to do it. Thank you so much. Bye-bye now.